flood doesn't discriminate. It hits everybody. The water came up 10 feet in the last three hours. You get a direct hit here, it's done. It's done. The tragedy is that Miami is cursed. It is literally in the bullseye of sea level rise. This city is absolutely doomed. No. He's going on in Miami. So it's just flood and flood and flood. You lost everything. We've always had extreme weather. But over the last 20 years, as climate change has accelerated, it has mutated and become more dangerous and unpredictable. From dry lightning, to the polar vortex, to bomb cyclones, and the fire nado. Welcome to the new reality. Welcome to mutant weather. As the global temperature rises, the planet is losing ground to the destructive power of extreme flooding. Inland, rapidly increasing precipitation is swamping cities. And in coastal areas, rising waters are threatening the very survival of entire communities. What is causing this mutant weather and how destructive will it be? Heat records are getting broken. The last four years have been the four hottest years ever recorded on the planet full stop. The trend is very, very clear. It's accelerating so quickly in the oceans. And of all the extra heat in the Earth's system, over 93% of it has transferred to the oceans. So what global warming really is, is heating the oceans. And as the oceans heat up, the rate of ice melt has tripled in the last two decades, tripling the rate of sea level rise what's already baked into the system because of how much energy has already been absorbed into the oceans and all of that warmth. We're looking at dozens of feet of sea level rise. For several decades, more and more industrial emissions are increasing levels of greenhouse gases that trap heat in the Earth's atmosphere. Global temperatures are expected to rise by 3.2 degrees Celsius. Glaciers and ice caps are melting faster than ever. Sea levels are rising, and the volume and intensity of rainfall is accelerating in many places. From Atlantic Canada to the southern United States to Ethiopia, Japan, and India, much of the Earth has been swamped by mutant floods. When you talk to people from all over the world, flooding shows up as, as the primary problem to climate change. Too much water in the wrong place. <laughs> Baton Rouge, Louisiana, August 2016. The state's second largest city is on the front lines of mutant weather, and lifelong Louisiana resident Rob Godet has seen it all. We get snow, we get floods, hurricanes, of course. We're frequently told it's going to flood here. So when you see it, you don't really think about it. You're like, okay, it's gonna be another flood. We get localized flooding all the time. A typical Louisiana summer storm is brewing in the area. In Louisiana, it rains every day during the summer. And you can see the dark clouds over here. They are thunderstorms coming. Baton Rouge averages about 60 inches a year. So Rob doesn't see any reason for alarm until he turns on the television. In La Place, Louisiana, rising water stranded some residents. Rain caused massive flooding. I was watching the news, and people are being rescued on television by helicopters. The governor is calling in the National Guard to help. At that moment, I said, wow, they said it would flood, but they didn't say anything about helicopter rescue. Emergency declarations are now in effect across portions of the state. I've lived in Louisiana my whole life. Never in 50 years had I seen any flooding to the degree, even inside of homes. Oh my God. The whole streets, the river. Entire towns were flooded. The water's still rising. Where is all this water coming from? There's a neighborhood back here underwater. People just can't get out. And that was the moment I realized this was going to be a major event. 
If temperatures are warmer across the globe, both on land and in the ocean, we could see more moisture-laden storms. Warm air can hold more moisture. The supersaturated warm air unleashes relentless rains and storms on Louisiana. And in each thunderstorm, they were filled with tropical moisture. These are moisture-laden thunderstorms. So just tons of rainfall out of each one of these. And you start training thunderstorms over the same city for days that's already prone to flooding, you've got a big problem. About two hours drive southeast of Baton Rouge, Louisiana, is Isle de Jean Charles. The island's residents are being driven from their homes by severe flooding caused by rising sea levels. The few remaining face a choice. Stay put as the flooding swallows their land or flee for higher, drier ground, becoming America's first climate refugees. Had a lot more land before. Behind you there, you could walk from here to Pointe de Now it's all water. Over Anthony Verdon's lifetime, a staggering 98% of the island had disappeared into the Gulf of Mexico. His friend, Rocky Bobuan, sees troubling changes on the local waterways. You look around you now, it's just open water everywhere. This was one time, duck ponds and marshes. Now you look around, looks like you're sitting in a lake right here. Edison Dardar is a councilman of the Isle de Jean Charles band of the Biloxi Chittimaca Choctaw tribe. I see right here from that point 25 years ago, all of that was grass, you know. In 1955, the island measured over 22,000 acres. Now barely 300 acres remain. Its population peaked at 400. Today, only 85 residents are left. Eventually, the island is not going to be an island anymore. Every year, when you look at it, more and more of the land is going. Like Edison Dardar, Hope Caldwell is a member of the Biloxi Chittimaca Choctaw tribe. When I used to come out here when I was a kid with my grandparents to come fishing, this was all like land. It was like all the marsh. There's nothing but water now, it just washed away. Now, you see them trees with that? The salt water killed all the oak trees. They look like skeletons. They've been gone for the last 40 years. Isle de Jean Charles is a harbinger of dislocations that will afflict people across the globe. This is one of the calling cards of climate change, changes in sea level, which literally may drive people from their native countries and, and, and end up with a generation of what we call climate refugees disadvantaged populations are going to continue to bear the brunt of floods, heat waves, and hurricanes. August 2016, the downpour in Baton Rouge, Louisiana is reaching historic proportions. 20 inches of rain is swelling rivers to record levels. This is literally the worst rain we've ever experienced in my lifetime. We had storms moving from north to south. Going over the Bayou Manchac Bridge. Lots and lots of flooding everywhere. This storm really caught us all off guard. It's Rob Godet's first encounter with mutant weather. The rain kept coming for about five days straight. Look to the right here. The water is right up to the roadway. This gigantic building right here is totally flooded. All underwater. That white thing's the top of a U-Haul. The Manchac Bayou is very high. There's water on the road up ahead. I got an emergency vehicle coming up behind me. This has thousands of people on this road backed up for miles and miles. It looks like they're desperately trying to keep the water off the road, but it's not working. With floodwaters reaching dangerous levels, Rob must keep moving to make it home. There's one spot in the road where the water's going over it, and it's pretty deep. You cannot see the sides of the road. You're literally driving into a lake, and you just have to keep pulling forward. If you go off to the side either direction, you feel like you could end up being swept off. That was uh, scary. It was pretty harrowing. 
The flooding continued for a week after that. People are stranded. The interstate is closed, so they're rerouting traffic. <laughs> Neighborhoods are all pretty seriously flooded. That water's deep right there in the front yard. Rob Godet doesn't know it yet, but researchers are determining that the 2016 Louisiana storm had 20% more rain than 30 years ago, and the root of the cause is a changing climate. And you're like, where did this water come from? Just inundating cities after city. We've got more water coming down over shorter periods of time in greater volume, hitting a landmass that has less capability to absorb it or handle it. When the water comes down, it doesn't absorb. It runs off very quickly to the lowest location into receiving water body systems, and that too contributes to flooding. It swelled all the bayous and all the streams through South Louisiana, and it just made its way south. It hit city after city after city. To have it overnight flood 150,000 homes was just surreal. It's people walking down the middle of the road. Miraculously, Rob's house is spared, but the flood has a profound impact on him. You can feel the suffering of your community because it was everywhere. I was really compelled to get involved. I knew I could help. That flood really changed my life. Miami Beach, Florida. Playground of the rich and fabulous. And frequently visited by extreme weather and flooding. Oh my God. Flooding downtown Miami. Craziness. And a city less than four feet above sea level in places, compared to New York City at less than 10 feet and Boston at 45. It was built literally on water. Miami Beach is a sandbar. Artist and climate activist Xavier Cortada understands Miami's dire straits, and he foresees a devastated city by the end of the century. Most of our community will be submerged with three, four feet of water. He uses art as a means of warning residents of coming sea level rise. And as you continue going to six feet, eight feet, it's over. Warning Miami of this existential flooding threat is Xavier Cortada's mission. It's a mission that starts 8,000 miles away. I went to the South Pole as a National Science Foundation fellow and I created a piece they liked and invited me to come. And that was a piece about global climate change. The scientists there hit me with the reality that the very ice that I was looking at, the very ice that I was standing on, threatened to drown my city. The only place I've ever called home. When he returns home, Xavier finds Miami is not interested in climate change. This was back when Miami wasn't talking about sunny day floods. None of that conversation existed. In fact, climate change was, a, was hardly a word. No. What is going on in Miami? <laughs> the term sunny day flood is used to dismiss Miami's frequent flooding. Flooding not caused by rain or storm surges, but the result of rising sea levels exacerbated by high tides. This type of flooding has doubled in the coastal United States over the past 30 years and is expected to dramatically worsen in the coming decades. Yo, look at all this water. I watched people putting on rubber boots and just walking. They call it sunny day flooding because when I was there, Rick Scott, who's now senator, was uh, governor and he forbade people in the state to use the terms global warming or climate change. And so they called it sunny day flooding, where you had these areas where basically the ocean's already coming up over and covering streets. Wow, that's insane. That's all sunny day flooding is. It's a cop-out term introduced to not talk about what's happening. Here's what's happening in Miami-Dade, and it's not good. Since 1930, South Florida has had over a foot of sea level rise. We could be at another two feet, according to the U.S. government, by 2039. My guess it'll be faster than that. Despite this, Miami's runaway growth continues. In 
2016, there were 400 new high-rise condo buildings being built. It's crazy that we're still building like this. At some point, it's going to be over. Before it's all over, Xavier Cortada has work to do. What many Miamians don't understand is that Antarctica is coming to town. Everything we know and love in due time will change. Across the globe, mutant floods are wreaking havoc. In Spain, inland areas are swamped from excessive rain. The sea level rise is washing away seaside communities in India, and in Japan, highly populated coastal cities are drowning. Isle de Jean Charles, Louisiana, birthplace of America's first climate refugees. This fragile island is exposed to the ravages of mutant weather and flooding, in part because of man made decisions. Over the years, the oil industry has dredged miles upon miles of canals. These are all oil and gas canals that were dug. And it let saltwater intrusion come here. I remember swimming in here, and it was this beautiful, nice, clean water. Now, you know, it was almost all fresh water, and that's all salt water. They get sharks right here across. They get sharks right in there now. Sharks. Before, the canals were cut, water couldn't come in. It stopped. Canals are cut, now the storm comes, the water had a way to come in. You get these strong waters coming in from storms, or even high tides, you don't even need storms. You know, the more currents flowing through something, the more damage it does. Eventually, the marsh is gonna disappear, you ain't gonna have none left. That disappears, then you just have houses sitting in the middle of the open water. This has all been open and cleared. Right back there, that was more grass and stuff. But since the pipelines, everything's uh, just, it's nothing but water now and just washed away. There's nothing to protect us because all the barrier islands that we had around Louisiana are gone. And most of them are gone because the oil fields dug canals right through the middle of them and just washed them away. That's plain and simple fact. We've removed the natural infrastructure that was originally here, the forest, the fields, the wetlands that were originally here. They're now gone. A month ago, heavy tide, waves pounding, pounding. This is water right here. Had sharks swimming in the yard. The water just came right in. There's nothing to stop it. I'm telling you, I'm 52 years old. I've watched it with my own eyes. It's getting worse and worse every year. It's a cruel irony that the fossil fuel industry supplies much needed jobs on Isle de Jean Charles, but the industry's greenhouse gas emissions are the first link in the chain of climate change, from warming to melt to sea level rise and flooding. Right now on the planet, about 80 to 81% of world energy supply comes from coal, oil, and natural gas. That's where we get our energy on the planet. Three fossil fuel-based sources that when burnt, they put CO2 in the atmosphere, which contributes to climate change. But when we have an excess of that greenhouse gas, like carbon dioxide, which is the primary player, uh, that's when we begin to worry about changes to our climate system. August 2016. On the rivers around Baton Rouge, Louisiana, the mutant floodwaters are cresting to two and a half feet, shattering records. President Obama has declared a state of emergency. It's going to be hopefully a lot more than... Rob Godet watches local rescue resources overload. The authorities were overwhelmed, and so citizens stepped up and helped. Get in your car, gas it up, and drive here, and we'll figure out the rest when you get here. It was that bad. By a man shackle, the floods bank. We needed people to come down and help. It's coming hard over that, that roadway right there. People coming back here with boats, getting as far as they can on the road and then letting into the water. Probably one out of every two citizens has a boat. There's a boat there, there's a boat here. They got in their boats and started helping people get out of homes. The local volunteers quickly give their rescue effort a name, the Cajun Navy. We met some gentlemen here, that we, their dogs has left. We picked up a, uh, a lady, she's trying to get to her dad. We had a boat, so we're trying to do whatever we can 
in our time of crisis and disaster, so this is time for everybody to pull together if they can. Louisiana is known as a Cajun state. We're very proud of that Cajun name, and uh, somebody blurted out, actually on Facebook Live, we just need to form our own Cajun Navy, and that was it. The first time I went out and helped was um, Sunday, August 15th, and it was actually my wedding anniversary, and got with a friend of mine. But right now we're in Prairieville where the water is starting to rise from the Amit River. And there's a neighborhood back here. It's probably underwater. Can you turn around? So there's a boat coming out right now with some people on it. Water is actually rushing. It's going pretty fast. When it hits the middle of the road, it drops off pretty hard. I don't think I can go that way. The water's too high. So we're just going to walk down it. Here it goes. I'm going in, guys. We found an area where the water was creeping up the road. Just trying to get down here and see if anybody needs any help. You could see it while we we're sitting there. You could see the water slowly rising. Do you have any water in your house already? We lost everything. Well, we got out safely, and uh, all our friends are safe, so that's the main thing. One minute, you're fine an hour later, there's water in your home, and there's nothing you can do about it. Some more people are still back there. Man, it's still rising out here. This spot was all concrete right here, and it's now covered with water. I honestly think the water has come up since I pulled in. Here we go. I think I don't know how close I am to the curb. It's definitely nerve-wracking. Feel the car tilt to the right and thinking, am I going off the side? I've gotten through the deepest of it. Dang. Harrowing. I stripped through three feet. See, we can barely get back as it is. It was just a surreal moment to see what was normally a road have boat traffic on it. Water is still rising. The people in the boats with their possessions and you know not knowing what was going to happen to their home, having left their home with water in it. Did you get your stuff out? No. Let's go help. Nobody's just sitting around watching. Everyone's coming together as one. I'm just wondering what's left, if anything. Everything that I had is gone. Everything. The sense of loss that they had, you could just see oh my God. loss in their eyes, and you felt it. This is my entire life that I worked my entire life for, it just washed away. It's hard. It's like the end of your life, end of your world, you know, having to start over like that. But we, we work so hard for it. You wake up one day and you have water inundating your homes throughout your state, and you need help. How do you do that? The whole town just washed away overnight. On Isle de Jean Charles, Louisiana, Hope Caldwell and the few remaining residents are watching extreme weather strike more frequently and with greater power. The weather has changed tremendously around here. Stronger storms means more damage, and you know how the weather creates these stronger storms. You know, the way it works, the hotter the water is in the Gulf, the bigger the storms can get because the hot water fuels the storms. It could take one good storm, like Katrina. If it came through here, I think it could wipe out, it would wipe that all out. Once able to weather high tides and big storms, Isle de Jean Charles doesn't stand a chance against today's unpredictable mutant weather. You get a direct hit here, it's done. It's done. All it takes that one storm, you're going to wash the houses away. People will be drowning. And in July 2019, it looks like one bad storm is coming. Tropical Storm Barry has been upgraded to a Category 2 hurricane. Expect 200 millimeters of rain. We are quite concerned. It remains a very dangerous storm, particularly with regards to the amount of water. Uh, that could be dropped in those areas in an already 
full river basin. It's what we call compound flooding, and we're seeing this more and more, where basically we have elevated saltwater levels for a couple days, and we have torrential rain, and basically the rain is impeded in its drainage. Where's that rain gonna go? Flooding is imminent. There's nowhere for Hurricane Barry's rains to go. A voluntary evacuation order is issued for Isle de Jean Charles. Our ability to conduct search and rescue operations will deteriorate as this storm continues to come ashore. The storm advances, and Anthony Verdon can't get out of town in time. This is Allergy Charles, and it's on the 13th, about 2 a.m. The water came up 10 foot 2 inches. It never, it never came up that high before, ever. 10 feet in the last three hours. It just overflowed into the front canal. Had to flood here for four days, no power in the water back here. It's never been that high before, never. We have requests for help, particularly in Terrebonne Parish. Number of people stranded. We are able to launch two of our helicopters and the rescue of those people. Anthony Verdon has a ringside seat as mutant weather swamps Isle de Jean Charles. The day after the storm, I'm out here with a net, literally scooping up a crab. Well, I seen fish coming over, trying to get away, you oh, know? Look at that crab! Water is up to here. Never seen anything like that. Mutant flooding like this is supposed to come from so-called 100-year storms. But now people are finding that they're having what used to be the one in a 100-year event, might have two of those within a five-year period or something like that. And increasingly so then, people are starting to realize that, boy, there really is a change in the dynamic of the system. And there's a tangible aftermath to that dynamic change. Storm surge came from that way and just broke all the bridge up. I mean, it was a perfect bridge. Now look at it. That bridge has been there for 60 years. Water pressure coming down the canal. It broke it just from the storm surge. I mean, break 12 by 12, just break them all. Just because of the water coming in on category one. You get a category three or four, you're going to wash the houses away. The island is increasingly defenseless against progressively extreme rains and storm surges. You can imagine a wall of water coming at you and it hitting a sponge before it gets to you. If you have marsh, it's a natural hurricane barrier. You take the marsh away, what happens? Storm comes, now the island is exposed to it. That'll be a direct impact for these storm surges. So the wall's actually gonna hit the islands versus having some cushion before it. Back in the day, it was bad hurricanes, but they had land that would stop it, stop that water from coming in. Once this marsh is gone, there's like no protection anymore. In Miami, Florida, Xavier Cortada wants to both warn and inspire his hometown to change while there's still time. Beginning with his installations, showing that Miami is less than 10 feet above sea level. They need to know what's coming. And as an artist, I try to make the invisible visible. Because unlike a hurricane that's at the water's edge and you can see and you can track and you understand that it's coming, climate change and sea level rise is something uh, that isn't so visible. The goal of Xavier's project is to open Miami's eyes to the coming calamity before it's too late. It's literally a vertical nursery of mangrove propagules. This is extraordinary. Yeah. The idea is, is uh, for you to take this and uh, plant it at your home uh, next to a white flag with your elevation on it. How many of these are you going to do? 25,000. Oh, my God. Let's go to this app, and when you type your address, it shows you the elevation of your property, exactly how many feet above sea level it is. And people don't realize that most of us live at seven, six feet above. Is that it? You live at seven feet above sea level. I want you to think of the coast not being at the water's edge on the bay, but literally being beneath your feet. I want you to visualize what Miami will look like as the sea levels rise to your elevation. Xavier wants Miami and surrounding areas to take more action. I don't think there will be a Miami in another century. Miami is literally in the bullseye of sea level rise uh, because of the way currents go and wind patterns. This city is absolutely doomed to sea level rise. There's no question about that. 
The ocean has came to the street. Look at this. One of the biggest threats of climate change is sea level rise. But sea level rise is just not related to water melting from the ice sheets. It's also related to something called thermal expansion. Uh, when water warms, it expands. And so that elevates the sea level in addition to the water being added from melting ice sheets. In Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and the surrounding areas, it's seven days since the historic flooding began, with damage of at least $10 billion, and 13 are dead. There's a helicopter flying above head. There's still active rescues going on. When you have a disaster like this, the authorities are just simply overwhelmed. There's no existing systems standing by in place, ready to take care of you know hundreds of thousands of people whose homes are flooded. Emergency personnel, they're doing their best, but they can't save millions of people. So that's when citizens get involved, and we begin to fill the gaps in care that the authorities just can't handle when they're overwhelmed with calls for help. Coming in thousands. In the meantime, it's been a local volunteer effort of epic proportions. I've called around and offered to help. I'm gonna step out and help load some sandbags in the back. Everybody can see what a community in Louisiana does when people are in need. Climate change is not only mutating weather, it's also forcing citizens to respond to disasters themselves when emergency personnel are spread too thin. A flood event can be so overwhelming that 911 and local emergency management just get overwhelmed really quickly, and all of a sudden you get things like the Cajun Navy, the Texas Navy. These are just citizens, concerned citizens with a motorboat that are going to go out and, and help people. During Hurricane Katrina, people died in attics, bodies were found um, in homes, um, floating in the water, because they, you know, if you're stranded out a mile from help, nobody knows you're there. You're, you know, you're not going to make it. As a software developer with social media savvy, Rob Godet brings his skills to the Cajun Navy and creates a citizen dispatch system. When you have 150,000 homes flood, you're going to have homes that are off the beaten path where people are stranded, and they'll call 911 and get busy signals and no response. So what people started doing, they went to Facebook and said, help me. Please send somebody to pick me up. I'm stranded and we need help right now. Rob's system takes requests for help and then dispatches the Cajun Navy. We worked around the clock. I remember being up at 3 in the morning and listening to our walkie-talkie app. And our dispatchers are sending people out to rescue cats or deliver water or go pull somebody out of a house. Deadly, destructive floods like those in Louisiana are forcing citizens to fend for themselves and go to extraordinary lengths to save neighbors. The Louisiana flood was really a, a baptism of fire. We figured out ways to help our citizens, really by hook or nook. During the Louisiana floods, the Cajun Navy, we estimate rescued about 30,000 people. In Miami, Florida, this coastal city will be one of the first places in the world to bear the brunt of rising sea levels. Climate change is many of the things that we projected to happen, things like sea level rise, are happening at a much faster rate than even we projected 20 or 30 years ago. Today, if you drive around, you see two Miamis. You see a very wealthy, glitzy Miami and then you see another Miami, and sadly, there's a stark distinction of people who are just struggling to make it every day. People who are doing everything they can to make their children have a better future. People who are struggling to make it work here in Miami. Artist and climate change activist Xavier Cortada worries about Miami's future. Sea levels are rising, threatening to swamp the city. The lower lying, poor areas will suffer most because those will become the places that we're not going to invest our resources in. We're not going to elevate those roads. Faced with this grim reality, Xavier is about to commit an act of artistic protest. That means, of course, is that we're at seven feet elevation. 
I like the Latin seven there. <laughs> I asked people to take a flag and put the elevation of their property on it. And as sea levels rise in the coming years, the city of Miami and Miami Beach will be flooded from the ocean and from beneath. I wanted to let folks in Miami understand that our seashore isn't just at the water's edge as they see it, but it's also beneath their feet because the salt water doesn't just come in as the sea level rises from the Atlantic, but also the salt water comes up beneath your feet through the aquifer. This process is called saltwater intrusion. Rising sea levels pollute freshwater aquifers, the source of drinking water for coastal cities in southern Florida. This is not a white flag of surrender. It's surrendering those ideas that, that this is always going to be without change. It's more about accepting what's to come, surrendering to the fact that nature is going to come in a way that we hadn't planned for and begin to plan towards that. I went around with city engineer of Miami Beach and they were in the process of raising several of the streets in Miami Beach one meter. They're convinced we're gonna try to save Miami Beach, which building a wall or raising streets to try to keep the ocean out, um, it's laughable knowing what's already baked into the system. We have failed to alter our behavior and now nature's soon gonna do it for us. On Isle de Jean Charles, Louisiana, uncontrollable flooding means time is running out for residents to make a choice, stay or go. When you wake up, you know, and you got four foot of water in your house, it's like, do you want to do, go through this again? Anthony Verdon has made his choice and now only lives part time on the island. The few people here, they've been here forever, you know? Most of them are Native Americans. Probably about 35 or 40 people left back here. Like Mr. Anderson Dotto, he's been here for 70 years. He said it's just getting smaller and smaller, more salt water, you know? When I was a kid, yeah, we had a bayou someplace around there. But they, they had a lot of moss, yeah. For many members of the Biloxi Chittimaca Choctaw tribe, like Edison Dardar, the island is their only home. That's my house right there. Forcibly moved to Isle de Jean Charles more than 170 years ago, this indigenous community is once again losing their land. Recent coastal restoration efforts have not been able to save Isle de Jean Charles. The damage is irreversible. I mean, we were born and raised here. Every day, living off the land. People used to trap muskrat. Now we got crab, we got shrimp, we got fish, we got oysters. Right there. 35 years ago, I was getting $7 a pound for shrimp. Now we're getting a dollar a pound for the shrimp. It's changed so much. Everything in the environment is getting harder and harder. Some residents are choosing to go before it's too late. That's the road for me out of here. Hopefully it goes back so I can head up. People moved away because they're just scared. The road getting out of here, the island road, it floods and we get high tides a lot of days. For those that remain, the United States government wants to move them off of Isle de Jean Charles, and yet some refuse to leave, like many members of the Biloxi Chittimaca Choctaw tribe. Us being Native American, we were here first before anybody was here. You know, it's like, isn't this really our land? It's just gonna ruin the whole way of life. It's, it's horrible, it really is. This is five generations that live here. To lose this and to be moved, it's just like losing uh, a part of them, you know? It's like losing a part of them. This is their land and they're not moving for no, you know, no one or nothing. They're gonna live here until it's gone. This is my, my home, my land, all my life. When you talk about moving, I know I am moving for sure. Their lives are already disrupted. They know that their whole way of being is changing, and they're going to have to leave a place where 
they and their parents and their grandparents and their great grandparents have, have always been. And especially talking about indigenous communities, watching people that not only are they going to have to leave, but their entire spirituality, their subsistence lifestyle, everything is being completely disrupted to the point where they're going to even have to relocate. And, and this means their whole existence is now being called into question. In Baton Rouge, Louisiana, the mutant floods have changed Rob Godet's view of weather. As a native Louisianian, I've lived here my whole life, and I've definitely seen an uptick in storms and disasters. You would never think you'd have a home underwater. It was like, where did this come from? It, it made no sense at all. They say it was a 500 or 1,000 year flood. We thought it was, and then a year later, we had the same thing happen in Texas. We look at this and we wonder, is weather changing? Is this gonna be a more common event? Researchers project extreme precipitation events will increase this century, bringing as much as 50% more heavy rain, leading to more catastrophic floods. The storm caused widespread devastation throughout South Louisiana. Nobody was immune, you know, rich, poor, it didn't matter, the water didn't care. 25th Street is gone underwater. A flood is a different disaster than a tornado or a hurricane. A flood doesn't discriminate, it hits everybody. You can have a tornado that'll cut a path where you have one house destroyed and the houses next door to them are fine. Well, here the entire communities are destroyed. As the planet and oceans heat, the age of mutant flooding is upon us. Sea level rise is coming. And unlike a hurricane, the water will not recede. And unlike a hurricane, it doesn't just target one location, it targets every place across this nation where land touches water. In fact, every place across planet Earth where land touches water. It's already evident that coastal cities and low-lying lands are facing rising waters, either from extreme weather or rising sea levels. But based on paleoclimate records, there's no escaping the coming inundation. Oh my God. Last time there was this much CO2 in the atmosphere, seas were anywhere from 18 to 30 to 40 meters higher than they are right now. And so based on that alone, what coastal city can survive. Is there any coastal city anywhere on the planet that won't have to be abandoned to the sea or moved entirely? Billions of people live in coastal cities and on vulnerable floodplains, all at risk of catastrophic floods. Each year, more and more people are forced to reckon with this new reality. How are you going to move New York City? How are you going to move Tokyo? Where are all those people going to go? What happens in those places? But that is the reality that is upon us right now with what's already baked into the system. Best case scenario, you're going to have to move every coastal city on the planet. It's hard to move a metropolis. It's not like moving a small group of people down the bayou in Louisiana. It's a more complex thing when you're dealing with 7 million people in South Florida. If inescapable flooding is the grim future, can humankind survive the coming mutant weather? I'm telling you, I'm 52 years old. I've watched it with my own eyes. It's hotter and hotter. It's just changing. It really is. Well, eventually the marsh is going to disappear. You ain't going to have none left. That's the way I see it. Many people have lost everything several times. and. You know, it, it, they don't want to leave. They want to stay. They, they stay where it's where their family is. It's where they were born and raised, and it's what they know. And so they just rebuild and get ready for the next one. What else are you gonna do? I mean, you can stay and fight it, and hope things get better. But it's not gonna get better because of the climate change. Nothing we can do about the climate. You know, it's changing. You have a lot of people around the world who are going to be dislocated in the millions. They're in areas that are flooding or it's drought or there's desertification, they simply cannot live there. When people talk about, oh, we still have 10 years to avert the catastrophe, this is nonsense. We're in it right now.